Hello, the Network Berg here. Welcome back to the lecture. In this video, we'll be going over DHCP. And this is an extremely useful protocol that we can use on our networks to obtain IP addressing, obviously, automatically. I'm sure everybody should be aware of what the HCP is, but maybe you're not too sure how it actually works on Microtik, and we'll look at that in this video. So let's get into it. Alrighty, I have a topology here on EVNG that I used in a previous video for bridging. And in this video, we will be setting up a DHCP server, DHCP client, as well as managing some of the DHCP leases. So in essence, we have this LAN network 192.168.10.0 slash 24. We've got PCs that have static IPs assigned to them at the moment. We're going to remove those static IPs and we're going to configure a DHCP server on the router. I think where we want to begin actually is configuring the DHCP server so that once that's ready, we can configure clients and then we can validate that they receive IPs. Um, I think I also just briefly want to go over how DHCP works. And DHCP works off of a type of, let's say, a mechanism called DORA, or <laughs> it sounds strange, but whenever you plug your computer into a switch or into the network somewhere, it will automatically start to try and discover an IP address. It will, it will basically send out a broadcast to see if there's any DHCP servers on the network to say, hey, um, let's say PC1 says, hey guys, is there anybody that can give me an IP address? And then if the router one is a DHCP server, it will then do an offer. So discover, offer, router one will send an offer to the computer to say, yes, I've got an available IP. Here is the IP address. Um, it is 192.168. 1.0. whatever the IP address is that's available. And then the PC can then say, okay, I'm going to request this IP address because the router's offered it, but then the, the PC basically says, all right, I'm requesting the IP address. I want that IP, please give it to me. And then that message gets back to the router and the router says, okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to acknowledge that I'm giving you this IP address. And that is in essence how Dora works in a very short uh, explanation, but that's what happens when your computer gets plugged in and it just wants to find an IP address. Have you realized if you plug your computer in, sometimes it gives this 169.254 IP address? Well, that is IP addressing that's reserved for machines that don't find an IP address so that you know, okay, I didn't get a DHCP IP. I either need to statically assign an IP or I need to fix an issue potentially on the DHCP server. Okay, so let's get into setting up DHCP quickly on the Microtech and I'm just going to close these windows and very important when it comes to DHCP and bridges, if you're going to configure DHCP, you use the bridge as the interface that you want to use DHCP for. You can't put DHCP on a slave interface, but if you just have one interface, so let's say only Ether1 was connecting to a switch, then you would use Ether1 as the interface for the DHCP server. But since we're using a bridge, we'll use the bridge interface for our DHCP server. And to access the DHCP, we go to IP, DHCP server. And then from the DHCP server, there's a few ways that we can configure it. The nice and quick and easy way is just to click on this DHCP setup. And then this will ask you which server interface do you want to use? And then I'm going to use my LAN bridge. What is the address space? So now we've got an issue because I don't have an IP address assigned to the bridge yet. So let's just do that quickly. Let me go into my addresses and let's assign 192.168.10.1 slash 24 to my bridge. So now this has an IP address on the network as well. So if I just click back, I go next. Actually, let's just restart. There we go. It automatically fills in whatever IP address it sees associated with that interface. If there was no IP, it will show that 0000 slash 0. But you can manually fill in the details as well. Um, here it picks up the gateway, which is the IP address of the bridge. Addresses to hand out. So here you can effectively create a address list. So maybe you don't want to assign the whole IP range out. Maybe you want to be very specific for the IPs that is sent out because at the moment this will send out anything from 192.168.10.2 up until 254. And maybe you've got stuff like servers and printers and whatnot in the very beginning of the range or, or even at the back of the range. So let's say the first 20 IPs are reserved for static addressing. So then we'll say from 21 up until, and let's say maybe the last 14 IPs is also reserved for static addressing. So let's make it from 21 to 240, we'll assign those addresses. You can click the, the down box and then mix and match it a, a bit, but 
I'll just use that. Uh, DNA server. So what DNA server will it send to its clients? And this will now send the DNA server that I'm currently using on the Microtik, but I could make this like 8.8.8.8 if I want to. Least time. So that is 10 minutes. I maybe want to make that a bit longer. So maybe I'll make that nine hours. I think actually eight hours should be fine as well. And there we go, setup's done. DHCP server, it's so quick and easy to set up. But what's happened with, when we did the wizard setup, it's actually created a bunch of um, objects as well, like this address pool it created for us. Uh, it just gave itself a little name there. And what I'd like us to do now is actually just remove the IP addresses from the PCs and then set up the DHCP client on them. So let's just quickly jump onto the computers. And hang on, I just need to remove their IPs. Actually, let's see, is Romon enabled? Tool Romon export. Awesome, hang on. I'm actually going to do this through Winbox as well so that I do not confuse anybody. But the setup you can do through the command line as well. That's That's how cool it is. Uh, let's connect to the Roman and let's find my PC. So there's PC one and then PC one. What I'm going to do is just first disable or remove this IP address. So it doesn't have an IP anymore. And I'm going to go IP DHCP client. And then it's currently got a client configured on ether one. I'll just remove that and then I'll set up on ether two another client and that's about it. We'll use the DNS that gets advertised. We'll use NTP and we'll add a default route so that we get internet. And let's see, and there we see I've got an IP address. One thing that's interesting about Microtik is it's addressing that it assigns actually starts from the back of the pool and then works its way to the very front. So 240 was the IP address that my uh, client received in this case. So now my address on ether2 i received dynamically from my dhcp server which is 240 let's just do the same for the pc2 so let me connect to the roman let's get to pc2 let me zoom in let me remove that address And I'll just quickly set up the client here. So IP DHCP client. Let's add ether two as well. Also the same settings. It's so quick to do. And there we go. So 239 is the IP address received by PC2. So let's quickly see is connectivity working. I'll just do this ping from the command line. Actually, let's connect on to PC1. And then from PC1, I'd like to see can we ping 192.168.10.239. We can. So we can get to PC2, which is awesome. So we've got DHCP server working and we've got a DHCP client working. Um, let's just look at manually setting up the DHCP server quickly. So I'm going to um, go back onto the router and I'm going to remove the DHCP. I'm going to remove the networks. I'm going to remove the leases and we're going to manually add the DHCP server now. So with the DHCP server, we can click on the plus and now we can give it a name. I can call this DHCP LAN. Again, the interface has to be a primary interface. It can't be slave interfaces. So in my case, it will be my bridge. Uh, my lease time, I'll make it eight hours again. And the address pool. So this DHCP pool zero was that dynamically created but I want to just show you where it is. If I go to IP and I go to pools or pool, this pool was created when I specified the range that needed to be handed out. If I click here, I could manually add a pool, call this the, the LAN pool. And then I could make it 192.168.10.21 to 192.168.10.21. Let's make that the new pool. So there's a new IP pool called the LAN pool. And I'll select the LAN pool. And that's all that I want to do from the server. And I'll apply here. So now we've got a server 
but it's still not really going to do much because we still need to specify the networks. So I'm going to add a network and this is the network address that's associated to the interface. So I'm going to make this 192.168.10.0 um, slash 24. My gateway is 192.168.10.1 and my mask is 255.255.255.0. DNS servers, this is the DNS I'm going to send out. And you see there's a bunch of extra options you can put in. I'm just not doing that because it's not the baseline requirement to get DNA or DHCP working. But you can fill in extra details if you want to send that to your clients. And I'm just going to hit apply. And that is it. So let's quickly jump back to the DHCP clients, PC1 and 2. And I just need to... <laughs> um, delete this IP and then it will recreate a new IP address. Actually, I might just need to disable and re-enable the DHCP client. So let's just do that quickly. Disable that, re-enable that. And there we see I've obtained 192.168.10.100 from my DHCP server. Let's do the same on PC3 or PC2, sorry. It's so IP DHCP client. Disable that, re-enable that. And then we should get 99 and that's perfect. We are, we're happy with what we're seeing here. So now we are managing the IP addressing autumn or dynamically. As you see, there is this release and renew, and this is the same as going onto your command prompt and typing IP config forward slash release renew. It's just a way to get the IP again. I just prefer doing the disable cause it's, it's <laughs> something I know in marketing. Um, all right, I want to quickly just go over managing the leases as well. So as you can see, we've obtained leases, which basically just associated a MAC address to an IP address. It gives us a client ID, which makes sense to our router. It tells us which server this belongs to, what address has been sent to the remote side. Um, okay, but that's the active address is the same as the address there. But if we want to manage the leases, oh, there's this check status button. This just tells you if it's uh, up or not. Uh, but if we want to manage the leases, easiest thing to do is just double click on a lease that you obtained. You can make a copy of that lease and then you can change things around however you want. So this way it will actually statically assign a, an IP to that DHCP client. So that client will always get this .99 address because this lease will always be in the table. But the nice thing from the, the options here is you can actually set all kinds of um, cool things. So you can even um, set a rate limit from here, which is actually the most useful thing that you can do from the DHCP uh, leases, because here you can restrict the amount of bandwidth each lease can maybe use. Um, but don't fiddle around with the rate limit too much if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, we will go more into rate limiting when we get to the QoS section. But if I wanted to make a computer only get like 100, uh, th let's just say uh, 100K, then that, that piece will only do 100K now. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's no fun for them. I might just have to renew that lease quickly. So that was 99, let's just disable, re-enable. And I've got that IP address, but now my traffic will be rate limited uh, by the DHCP server. All right, so that covers the DHCP server, client, lease management. One more thing that I want to bring up is with the DHCP, uh, if we go to the DHCP, you also get a DHCP relay. So think of the DHCP relay as a remote DHCP server that you're specifying. If you specify a relay, you can basically say for which interface you want the, the relay to be, and then you can say uh, what the actual DHCP server's IP address is. So maybe uh, if I go back to my topology, um, maybe router one was connected to another router wh where the actual DHCP server was situated, then you can use the IP address on that remote end to do a relay. So the DHCP request will come through, it will get to the router and the router will just request an IP from the relay. The relay will send it back to the router and then the PC will obtain an IP address. So that also covers the relay. So I'm going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.